Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Are we still recording? Yes, okay. Infidel1258 here. Uh, in this video, we're going to explore how you can move from 30 US dollars worth of investment in this game up to tens of thousands of dollars like I have. Um, I started somewhere also. I didn't buy, move into this game and buy 50 grand worth of cards. I implemented three specific techniques that I'm going to talk to you about in this in this game, or sorry, in this video, and you're going to see how you can do these things too, and moving forward, how that's going to build value. This this game, first of all, Splinterlands is amazing. It's both fun and rewarding, and um, that rewardingness is is like something that we can verify and we can we can test. It's a claim that I'm making. I'm saying this game will reward you financially, and you can test that, uh, that uh, assertion by looking at how well I've done, but also how look at the videos I've shown you and you know everything from dark energy crystals that you make per win or season rewards that you get on the season or daily rewards um, after you complete your quests. Um, you can look at the price appreciation on the cards. Um, you can, and, there, and there's other things too that we're gonna get into here. And I'm gonna show you it's not done with. This isn't something that happened two years ago to people like me who got lucky. It's something that's happening right now to people like you who are willing to commit their time and attention to a game that rewards them. So let's get into the, the reasons why and how a person could start today and start building value in this game by just playing a fun game. Um, if you're new to my channel, I do videos where we talk about Splinterlands. I show gameplay. I do tips and uh, tricks, hopefully things that you can implement at your, wherever you are, from champion all the way down to bronze that are going to help you climb. Uh, we, we, we look at things like the rental market, how we can exploit that to our own advantage, and everything in between. So please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Now let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to address is the issue of renting cards to rank up. We've already talked about that significantly, um, and we've done a video series on it. And you can go back and you can look at uh, the last two weeks, we've been doing a video series. We're almost done the season where I've been using this account, DE Cunningham, which had 22 cents worth of cards in it at the beginning. And I rented a full deck, blue, black, um, white and green four splinters that were equipped in a way that allowed me to climb up here into gold two gold three currently gold three just because my power level is too low um, and i did so in a manner that paid for itself i rented 5600 dark energy crystals worth of cards and after one that was for a one week worth of rentals after one week worth of rentals i had 5600 dark energy crystals left in my account earned by playing with those rentals that's so important you don't need to think that this is too too difficult or too expensive i spent 30 us dollars worth of dark energy crystals and after a week i had 30 us dollars worth of dark energy crystals back in my hands so it's it's cost neutral and in fact, there are manners, I'm certain of it. There are ways that I could have built that deck better that would have allowed that, that week to have been profitable. So you can earn from your daily victories uh, by renting uh, from the rental market. You can do peakmonsters.com, come in here and, uh, and check out the rentals. You can come into um, splinterlands.com and find the rentals market, card rentals. And then you can just isolate a splinter. You want to build a fire team. Um, you, you need to start with your summoners. And we've done this all before, so we're gonna, not going to spend too much time on it. But you choose your summoner. Then you find your, your tank looking for somebody that's going to have a decent amount of hit points at the level that you're planning on playing. Um, the, that's what the tank role really is, the heavy hit, hitter that soaks up damage. And then you're going to move into some support like that are going to provide magic damage from the or archery damage from the back end. Build your team out with five or six characters if you're in bronze, uh, maybe seven or eight characters if you're in silver, and probably you know more if you're going to be in gold or, or higher. And I, I'm certain, I, in fact, I've proven that you can rent decks that will produce at least a... Um, a full return of your initial investment. And on top of that at full return of your initial investment, you're gonna see things like, you're gonna see cards that you get to keep. 
you're going to get season rewards of some amount. That's going to be determined based on how far you reach and as well as um, your power. But then you're also going to get daily rewards. And some of these cards that you're going to see here, owned. These are cards that I've, I've earned by winning. Um, and, and so they, they might be worth 50 cents, 80 cents, uh, to start with, but cards that are new are often worth 80 cents. And then later they're worth $8 or $20. And I can show you card after card from, from promo or reward or untamed, um, we have to go to the marketplace that have just shot up in value. Uh, let's go neutral. Let's show you one example. The Onyx Sentinel. This card used to sell for about 20 cents a, a card. Uh, I was buying, I knew even right away that this card was an amazing card and I was buying every copy I could get my hands on uh, with my main account. Because this card is, it's like a duplicate of a legendary card, but it's only epic, which means you can play it in more scenarios. And it, at the time, no one was using it. So it's like it mimicked the value and characteristics of a card much higher, like that was much more expensive. Um, and I just knew it was going to be value. Like it, it provides shield, void, thorns, and return fire. It has eight hit points. Look, remember this card. It, it has no attack. Let's go back now to look at the Lord Arianthus. Lord Arianthus, which is currently selling for over 100 US dollars per BCX, shield, void, thorns, and magic reflect. It, it has one different ability. Um, the other one had archery reflect. Um, it has no attack. It has one more hit point, and it's the exact same mana cost. So this card is selling for $100 per BCX, and you need 11 of them in order to create a, a full version. But the other card, um, Onyx Sentinel, you need 46 of them to make a maxed out level six version. And each each BCX is worth about $253. So this is going to cost this card even today is way undervalued for what it could be. Like it offers you the same utility, roughly speaking, of that legendary card we just looked at, but this one sells for forty-six times. Call it forty-six times three, one hundred and forty bucks to get a, a maxed out version card of this, as opposed to $110 to buy one copy of that Lord Arianthus. This is the type of thing where appreciation is being observed in new cards. Cause it, like I said, this used to be selling for 20 cents at, at, at BCX. So this is a, an example of where a card comes along and you can identify its value before others do. Seeing how the meta might change or seeing how a card like this can, can mimic and offer uh, a solution that is way cheaper than the alternatives out there. Then you start buying it uh, uh, or even just ho hoarding the ones you earn for free while playing the game, knowing full well it, its price is going to appreciate as the, as the issuance of it reduces because these cards are printed in limited number and then they get burnt by the users to increase the value the, the power of each uh card you own you have to burn 46 copies to get one copy of the level six so that um so that shows you two points one renting up we can rent cards to rank up and gain daily or season rewards. Um, and, and then when you're getting those daily and season rewards, the cards you own, uh, they're yours permanently, even after the re rentals are returned. And they, the, cards, the, the rental cards pay for themselves and the cards will appreciate, maybe a lot or maybe a little. But you can, you can use your own intelligence to kind of review that and see opportunities like this. Like when this card came out, I saw it, I bought it, and I enjoyed the appreciation of that card. Uh, I even sold my Lord Arianthus card for at the time, like $100 and bought a, a maxed out copy of this for like, I think it was 20. So you then, 
you sell meta and you buy off meta and your deck gets more has a deeper depth of strength and you start to build value in that way so that's all just under my first point for how um you can make value with this because you need to rent cards that's rent cards to get in the game to allow yourself to win to earn those daily uh dark energy crystals plus daily rewards and season rewards then you have the opportunity to start to see some of that appreciation from those cards so what's point number two buy booster packs uh well why would we want to buy booster packs i've heard i've actually seen some good videos on youtube and you know some interesting content creators who are saying you should not buy booster packs and i strongly disagree from personal experience i've just seen my own deck appreciate so dramatically um, and it's a product of untamed booster packs can't oh i gotta do that later um i can't show you i used to be able to come into here into here and see how many booster packs i bought and of the untamed and and also for my other accounts um, and that was super nice. I don't know anymore. I think it's something like a thousand untamed booster packs over the course of all three of my accounts. Um, and the, each each booster pack cost two dollars or two thousand dark energy crystals, and gives you five cards, one of which was at least random. And this is the um, those cards at first are really inexpensive. They ended up being about a, worth a dollar on average, and I paid two bucks for the deck. So why do it? Well, first of all, you can get dark energy crystals for free while playing the game. So then you, you're just reinvesting that time and attention that you're being rewarded with to buy packs. That's easy. Second of all, there are ways at times to get dark energy crystals for cheaper than US dollars. So even though you 2000 dark energy crystals equates to $2 when you're buying packs, I was buying my dark energy crystals for like roughly a buck 20 for two dollars so i'd spend a dollar 20 worth of steam on a, on steam engine and i would get two dollars worth of dark energy crystals now that was a long time ago dark energy crystals are now worth more than a dollar per thousand but the point still stands that there are different ways to take advantage of that system to use to get cheap packs and yes those cards are cheaper they're like I said, they're only initially worth probably less than you money you paid for the pack. But like I explained a minute ago with the price appreciation on these cards, and like I explained also how the meta changes and when a card comes out like that um uh Onyx Sentinel, at first it's worth twenty cents and now it's worth two dollars and eighty cents. Why does that happen? Because the number of cards issued is limited. There are constantly they are constantly being burned, reducing the supply. There is a constant inflow of new players, causing an upward pull on the prices. And at the same time as those the number of supply is diminishing because of the burn that we talked about. And because the meta is changing, people start to recognize the power of the Onyx Sentinel after months of you using it, after months of you showing the league and you're winning with it. And people are like, oh, I keep getting beaten by that stupid Onyx Sentinel. So then it starts to change and that card, the price spikes. But also airdrops. When you buy booster packs, you get access to airdrops. Every 100,000 packs sold will unlock a new card that will be added to the packs going forward and will be airdropped to players who have purchased packs already. This feature is something they did with Untamed and then with Dice also. Um, and it's something they're planning to do with Chaos Legion. So when Chaos Legion comes out and you can buy Chaos Legion packs in here, you're going to get airdropped free cards in addition to those cards you in, you have in your the five cards you get for sure in your pack okay so you get five cards for sure those cards are going to appreciate and they're gonna exceed the two dollars i promise because it, eventually all these cards go up in value why because of the decreasing supply and the increasing demand but then also you're going to get these airdropped cards and if you buy the packs early when cast legion comes out you're going to have access to all I don't know if there's going to be 14 airdrops, but you'll get access to all of the potential airdrops. So personally, I'm going to buy a load of Chaos Legion uh, booster packs in September when that when the pre-sale happens. In order to do that, this is a side point, but you're going to need to you're going to need to have SPS um, staked on your account. And every every day, I'm claiming 460 
uh, SPS because of the value of cards I hold in my account. And since this process started on August 2nd, which is 10 days ago, you'll see I've claimed 3,000 US dollars worth of SPS. That's a separate thing altogether, but like that's 3,000, I've made $3,000 in the last 10 days, $300 a day for free just by holding the cards that I'm enjoying playing. That's a whole other point, but you're going to need some of this SPS and you're going to need it staked against your account in order to to buy packs of the Chaos Legion within the, uh, the pre-sale. I'm going to do that because I strongly believe in the point I'm making around the price appreciation of these cards and the airdrops, the value of the airdrops. So what, what did the airdrops look like? Here's an example. I, I don't have this on my own, so I had to go find out on the internet. This is somebody who's talking about the Goblin Fire Mage when the Fire Mage was released. It was one of the untamed airdrops, the 11th untamed airdrop of 14. And you can see it's the stats there. It's a great card. Just this morning in a different video, I was talking about how amazing this card is. Um, but there, look at all these cards. This card is a legendary. This card's a legendary. This is, uh, I think, an epic summoner or rare summoner. This is a legendary summoner, legendary summoner, legendary summoner, legendary summoner, legendary summoner, uh, legendary summoner. I forget what she is, but she's good. And they all were great cards. You can't see the last four here, but this is how it looked. At, uh, every 100,000 packs sold, a new one was released. 100,000 sold, new one, new one, new one, new one, until all of the untamed cards were sold, untamed packs were sold, at which point there was no more airdrops. So somebody who bought cards back here, bought untamed packs, got access to all of these airdrops. And with my hundreds of untamed packs, I got some of each of these. And I sold them in some cases, like the, I sold my llama. Oh man, I sold my llama for like seven US dollars. And now it's worth like over a hundred. So these cards appreciate and you get free ones with it. And it's, and it's almost, depending on if you get like a good number of packs, it's, you're going to get some of these. Um, look at the average chances of finding a goblin fire mage is one in 70 packs. So I was rocking about a thousand packs. So I, I don't know how many fire mages I got, but I got, you know, 20 or 15 or something. Um, and I, the same is true with all of them. They, there were slightly different odds for the legendaries, but I got a couple of those ones. I got a couple of those ones, a couple of those ones, everything you see here, I got for free with my, with my packs and you will too, if you buy chaos legions, not, I can't promise it, but you know, the odds are, will be the odds. There'll be like something like this, and you'll have your equal chance, just like me. And uh, this this adds to that value. When we talked about it was only worth one dollar worth of cards for the two dollar pack, but then I also got fourteen airdrops, and then um, I also saw the price appreciation on those cards. So airdrops. That's one of my main points here. Uh, what else do we got? Booster. So reason one, the cards will, the cards that come in the booster pack redefine the meta. That's something that we kind of talked about earlier. But as you buy untamed booster packs or Chaos Legion, the cards you're going to have early access to allow you to be an early adopter on a new meta, right? You see, you see cards before other people do, then you start winning more because they don't know how to respond to that. So booster packs give you that early advantage. Uh, the cards will, in some cases, mimic cards that you already own, like we said about that uh, Onyx versus the um, Lord Arianthus, and that allows you to sell the old meta cards for new higher prices and substitute the new off meta cards um, with similar win rates, which is totally what happened in my deck. And then I just reallocated that extra money, um, allowing my deck to be more powerful, more have more depth um, than it previously did. Reason three for booster packs, they offer you airdrops. And reason four, uh, the booster pack cards always start off cheap because people don't know what to do with them and they don't know what the new abilities are. But the price, just like all other monsters, goes up because of those supply and demand issues we already talked about. So that's the first two reasons why Splinterlands can still earn you $50,000 uh, if you're spending your time and attention over the next while. Um, 
flipping monsters. This is something people have been asking me about. I make a fair amount of money you flipping monsters. And I've got some proof here for you that we can we can unpack. But what this basically is, is you go into the marketplace, you identify cards that are undervalued, meaning they were placed on the market by somebody who was either desperate to sell or didn't really know the value of what they were selling. They listed it at a price that was far below what, what is truly the market value. You go in, you identify that, you buy it off the market and immediately relist it. And unlike flipping houses, this requires no renovations. I literally buy it for one price and sell it for a higher price. And they always sell. When If you're doing this with the, with the discerning eye, you can't go in blindly, click buy, and just assume that you're going to make money. But you go in and you identify low, uh, undervalued cards, and you can sell them up for much for significantly higher prices. And we'll show you an example right now. Um, yeah, we'll show you an example right now. So you can come into peakmonsters.com and you can click on your profile and you can look at either uh, My Explorer, which is gonna be all of your buy and your sell and your rental revenue and so on, or you can go into market history, which is gonna show um, a more detailed depiction of what you bought and sold over the last half month or month and recently i've sold a bunch of animated corpses so sell animated corpse 750 750 750 all of those cards i acquired recently for about half the price and i'll show the proof okay so we go we go in here and 23 days ago i listed New card on the market. I listed this card for 750. A duplicate copy, duplicate copy for another 750. Another duplicate for 750. Another duplicate for 750. Another for 750. Another for 750. And one more for 750. And then another one for 2160. So I bought like I literally I saw somebody was listing these 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 cards for way under price, and I just bought the market. I didn't even I didn't care that I don't need that many of them. Do you see? I understood that they were being listed for less than they were worth. And so I bought them and was willing to wait a few weeks to see that profit. So 23 days ago, I listed them and I would have bought them that day too. So let's see. This is my a different view with, with some of my um, new card on the market. So that's when I listed it. Here's the purchase. So purchase by me from four different players. I bought all of those cards. Level five, level four, level four, level four, four, four. And I paid $38 and, and four cents. Or I paid, well, I'm not going to add that all up, but you could see what Dark Energy Crystals were worth back then. It was different than today. So I paid $38 and four cents. And then I waited 23 days and they're all sold now. And I sold, um, this is the sales. So I sold 750, 750, 750, 750, 2160, 750. So that's, look, I sold one a week afterwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I sold seven of them and I, did I buy seven? One, yeah, I bought seven and I sold seven, all within 23 days. I paid $38 and I sold them for, let's get a calculator, 21, 60 plus 750, hang on, 750 times six equals $45 plus 2160, 666. Um, okay, so I, I made sixty six. I sold them for sixty six dollars and sixty cents, and I paid thirty eight oh three nine. So I made twenty eight dollars and fifty six cents profit off of these cards over the course of just three weeks. All I had to do was find them in the market, recognize the value, buy them, and list them, and then wait. It happens time and time again. This is the best sample example I can give you right now, but if we went back even further and I spent more time, I could show you so many other examples. Sometimes the that's like I paid 
six, I paid 30, well, how much? I paid 40 and I made 66. That's almost double your money. It's about 40% ROI in a month. That should, that should be like, that should blow your mind right now. Like that should be, oh, even if I don't like this game, I'm going to get in the market and try and trade these cards. You see, like this game is so, and the only thing is I have a unique advantage that if you just were to come in here to this market and try and do what I do, you couldn't necessarily, because you have to understand the meta, you have to understand the cards that um, are going to trade, you know, fairly quick, quickly and, and you have to see how the value works. But if you can learn this skill, and it's something I could probably teach you, but if you could learn the skill that you could flip monsters and you can make value that's going to add into your deck, which is then going to roll over into more cards you can buy, which is going to add to your power, which is going to produce SPS per day. And we already talked about 3000 US dollars worth of SPS in the last 12, 10 days. Um, so it just snowballs. And you think, well, I'm only getting, you know, 10, I'm only getting 26. Um, I'm in I'm only playing in silver and I'm only getting 18 loot chests this season, plus, you know, four cards per day when I un do my daily quest. It's not, it's no big deal, but it snowballs. It adds, you start to get these cards and you start to get DEC from winning. And then you spend your DEC in the market to flip monsters or to rent more powerful cards and climb to higher ranks. And then you start winning more cards, which then end up giving you more power which gives you more spc and then the the cards go up in value because they def they are deflationary assets in that they you have to burn copies of them and there there's always more players demanding those older cards so it's like you can play it for free by renting these cards the and then the booster packs that are coming in the future are you're going to be your new opportunity to do what I did in the past. The flipping monsters is something that you're going to need to have some assets to start with, but you know that's something that'll come with time. And and it doesn't need to be a thirty dollar purchase. If you buy one card for fifty cents and sell it for a dollar, you just doubled your money. And that happens too. I don't do that because it's not enough uh, profit for me. But you could do that. And so this absolutely is. Um, repeatable and i'm showing it all the time with my youtube videos like it's just i i these are facts and if and, and if you follow what i'm showing you it's going to be it's going to mean success for you in this game that would be worth your time even if it didn't pay you it's fun enough like it's it's entertaining and it's fun to the point where you probably should play it even if it didn't pay you but i just showed you in the last half an hour that it will pay you and it did pay me and it isn't too late for you to see similar gains that sounds ludicrous because it because everything in you is going to want to say like oh but you know, that was him. I'm not that lucky or I can't, I can't, I can't see that happening again. Explain to me why not. Explain to yourself, forget about explain to me, explain to yourself why not. Articulate a meaningful and logical explanation of why it can't happen now. And I think if you, if you actually put your feet to the fire on that issue and you say, well, why couldn't it happen now? I mean, he's already showed me in the form of his videos that the rentals will pay for themselves. So what risk is in it for me? Why don't I just give it a shot and rent some cards essentially for free and then see where it lands? Because in in one in one season, you're going to see a certain trend. Like in one season, you're going to make maybe just a couple dollars. But what if you made a couple dollars every two weeks? What if you're high, if you make it to gold or diamond? What you know, you you might be making ten or twenty dollars a season, and then what if you leverage that ten or twenty dollars by flipping monsters or by um, buying packs? Where could that lead? And if you're not seeing the potential there, then I just think maybe you're just not willing to see it because there is potential there, and I'm showing it to you. I've proven it, in fact. And so I really would invite you to give it a shot. And and if at the very least, if you think I'm wrong, 
let's go there. You know, show me or talk to me about how I might be mistaken, because I think that might be a worthwhile conversation also. I think, fr- frankly, I am 100% correct in what I've said here to you, but that's a worthwhile conversation. So let's have it. And I hope this is valuable to you guys. I really think I'm telling you the truth when I say that there's opportunity for you here by investing just your time and attention and some dark energy crystals that are going to be recoverable through your own playtime. You can see the type of appreciation and wealth generation that I have. And when we talk about wealth, you know, this is life changing wealth. You know, people. Some people in the world don't have never seen that type of money. Look at that. My collection is worth 57,000 US dollars. And I'm telling you, I've showed you already how you can start for $30 worth of rental. Do you see the power of this? And if you don't, please leave me a comment, you know, explaining why you feel this is not, you know, this isn't going to work or I'm wrong. Because if I'm wrong, I actually want to stop talking about this, but I don't think I'm wrong. I think I'm 100% right. And I think if you're listening to this, you are set to benefit. It might take two years. This doesn't happen overnight for me. My account has been around since, uh, where is it? Since January, 2019. It might take a couple of years. But by playing a game that's fun and entertaining, you can see rewards. I hope that's helpful to you. And uh, thanks, guys, for all of your time and attention. This was a long video, but this was an important video. Thank you, and bye for now.